come, Lord, as we want to see. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Would you just lift your hands in this holy atmosphere? Lift your voice, pray in the language of the Spirit. Just raise a sound to Him. Just raise a sound to Him. He wants to hear you. Oh, my word. Yeah, yeah. Touch your heart. Oh. Yes, go ahead. Just pray in the spirit if you can for two minutes. Where's the Paragatora Masia Marahana? You are before the God of heaven and earth. You are in the presence of the King of Kings. Lift your voice, raise your voice. Pray in the Spirit. Something is happening in your inside. 
Something is shifting in this place. the Lord with all that is within you praise his holy name bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name serking salakuna oh yana na yana 
pensado nada. Oh, oh, oh. Just the drums and the people. Say kisara kuna. Oh, oh, oh. Ya na na ya na. Say kisara. Lift your voice and praise him. One more time, say, say, Kisara. Oh, ya na na. Say, Kisara, kuna. Oh, ya na na. Kashina, kashina. Kamura, say, Kisara. Come on, let's do it two more times. the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord, oh bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, with this prayer. Bless the Lord, oh, bless the Lord, sing out His praises, oh, 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 yeah. hey. Come on, wave your hands and give Him praise. Let all that is within you bless this holy name. Bless him in the congregation of the righteous. By him, therefore, let us continually offer sacrifices of praise, the fruit of his of your lips, giving confession to his name. Bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Bless the Champion of Heaven. Bless the Captain of your salvation. The champion of the whole stable and 
Kapila my destiny in you are I make my most you reign alone as Lord Father we thank you tonight you are highly to be exalted your name is higher than every other name how excellent is your name in all the earth we bless you this evening in the congregation of the righteous we thank you for your presence in this place we give you glory and praise and for what you are about to do this evening let your name truly be glorified. Visit us and ignite a fresh fire in our spirits. Let something drop from heaven upon our lives. Let the entrance of your word come with light and with wisdom. And power that is capable of transformation. Let the glory return to you. In this atmosphere, let everyone that is sick be healed. Let every burden be lifted. Let every oppression come to an end. In Jesus' precious name. Please clap your hands for the King of Kings as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Are we set tonight? Tonight is going to be a night of revival. It's going to be a night of empowerment. Something will be activated in someone's destiny. I said something will be activated in someone's destiny. The Bible says they go from strength to strength, each one that appears before God in Zion. There are certain meetings that God prepares and you know that it's a divine visitation for his people. And tonight will be one of such meetings in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Tonight we are going to spend more time to pray And I believe in the power of prayer I believe in what the Lord is doing in our midst And I believe that every major advancement in the kingdom Every dimensional and every notable shift that must happen In the life of an individual as far as the kingdom is concerned cannot escape the route of prayers and as we pray tonight I believe that something will break up from heaven and fall upon our lives and give us an edge as far as our advancement in life and destiny is concerned and the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus name Luke chapter 18 verse 1 If you are there with me, say Amen. Luke 18 verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Let me read that in King James translation. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That men ought always to what? Pray and not to faint. Write this down as the topic. The mystery of prevailing prayers. The mystery of prevailing prayers. The mystery of prevailing prayers. 
Now when you read that verse You discover that Jesus by himself Has clearly Given us the comparison With prayer How that it is either A man finds himself Constantly engaging In the prayer business Or if he is not Then he is fainting in other words, according to Jesus' description from this verse, the opposite of prayerfulness is not prayerlessness. So if a man is praying, then he has escaped from a state that the Bible calls faint or fainting. To faint is not only physically to lose consciousness. In terms of scriptural understanding to faint also means to become weary to become tired to become depressed to become discouraged in heart and in soul the psalmist will always speak about his soul growing faint so when a man faints according to the scriptures he's actually going through an emotional downturn he's going through certain situations that have brought him to a state of depression a state of despair and a state of discouragement wearied of life itself that's actually a suicidal state as a suicidal state in that state there can be no atom of faith in you to believe god for a change of your situation or to believe god for a major advancement as far as life is concerned so jesus by he has clearly set out the parameters here that it is either you engage in prayer and by that draw strength from god and by that draw strength from heaven the bible says in isaiah chapter 40 i believe in verse 26 it says has that have you not known have you not heard the everlasting god the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor weary neither faint nor worry so god in himself is the only entity that can never be tired that can never be depressed that can never be discouraged why because strength comes from him and then the next verse has this to say because of these attributes of his that he neither faints nor worry the bible says this that he giveth power to them that are weary and to them that are without might he increases in strength but it is only through prayer that you can tap into this dimension of god it is only through prayer so according to jesus is either you are praying and by that drawing strength on a daily base on a daily base or you are you have lost touch with prayers and then you are already on the pathway towards fainting and if you continue along on that path, a time will come where the last thing you want to do is pray. And if you know the devil very well, you know that before the devil attacks an individual or an agency or a system or a community of people, he must first of all shut down the spiritual stronghold that sustains and empowers those people. Once the spiritual advantage is cut off, that person becomes a puppet. He becomes a prey. He can easily be caught by anything. Are we together? Now Jesus taught a parable in that chapter. And the reason for that parable was an emphasis on the life of prayer. The Bible tells us that Jesus was called the last Adam. In other words, when God created man, the first man, which was called Adam god had intentions that that man was going to mirror exactly his purpose and his plan for why the human race was created when god created man in genesis chapter one please follow me this night the bible says this was the purpose for the creation of man it says let us make man verse 26 of genesis 1 in our image and after our likeness so man was supposed to carry the image of god and was supposed to walk in the likeness likeness there means have attitude or character that is in the semblance of god every other animal was created after its kind 
every other plant of vegetation was created after their kind only man was not created after its kind or his kind man was created after the god kind let us make man in our image so the image of a goat is a goat the image of a lion is a lion but the image of man was supposed to be god and god said let them have dominion brothers and sisters from that statement that statement was what kick-started the ministry of prayer unfortunately man never understood it was only till when you read genesis chapter 4 towards the end of that chapter that the bible tells us that after abel was killed and cain was separated the bible says of cain you know cain represented the flesh cain represented the fallen man the man that wanted to live after the state of his fallen nature the man that was exempted from the life of god the bible says that cain departed from the presence of god is in your bible you read it in genesis chapter 4 so it is possible to depart it is possible to lose touch with the very environment that god uses to beautify and to power your christian experience it is possible that's why the bible says having the form of godliness but denying the power thereof the power is lost when the individual has departed from or has lost touch with the very presence that powers his or her existence somebody say amen so the bible says cain departed from the presence of god and he dwelt in the land called nord i checked the meaning of the word nord and it meant wanderings w-a-n-d-e-r-i-n-g in other words to wander or a place full of people who are vagabonds you know where vagabond is to wander up and down in other words a place full of people who are aimless in their approach as far as life is concerned a place full of people without purpose a place full of people without a destination a place full of people without a future that was the place Cain dwelt and then Cain began another civilization but then God blessed Adam and his wife again with another son called Enoch. Sorry, Seth. And the Bible says Seth gave birth to a son called Enosh. And here's what the Bible says at the last verse of chapter 4. It says, in his days, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. That was when they discovered that when God created man, prayer was created as a business by which man can engage the heavens and then bring a reality of what is in the heaven to play on earth he said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion i hope you know by reason of that statement god exempted himself from operating full scale in dominion on the earth are we here tonight from that statement god ceased to become lord of the earth yes it is true that the earth is the lord but the lord is not yet lord over the earth those are two different things the earth is the lord but he is not lord over the earth because he said let them have dominion from that statement god exempted himself from the earth and even though he had created the entire earth and he owned it but from that statement man became the principal authority that can create access or exit to the earth realm so man naturally was created in such a way that he will be a bridge between two worlds the realm of the spirit and the physical realm so it is man that permits the entrance of any spirit being or any spirit agency that is functioning on the earth any kind of culture or civilization you find functioning on earth that you know came from another dimension is existing here today because a man permitted it and that means that if god will move in your life there has to be some legitimacy of permission it will be by certain activities it will be by certain ways by which you conduct your life and certain ways by which you relate with god that will give god access or that will barricade god out it's important that you understand that statement too, so that tomorrow when something bad happens to you you will not say where was god no 
God is always there. But God, as far as the earth is concerned, He is handicapped. He is powerful, but He doesn't have authority on the earth. May that statement sink down to your stomach in Jesus' name. Oh yes. Because a lot of people have blamed God for many things. Say, why do bad things happen to good people? Say, where was God when my mother died? Where was God when this happened to me? God was there. But there was no means to permit him to intervene. Aside from what we call the sovereign will of God. And I will show you tonight that even the sovereign will of God can sometimes be bent or be compromised by man. It is high time we wash our minds from that mentality, particularly those of us in northern Nigeria. You know, there's a statement, I don't know how to say it, but there's a house statement that says, you know, let it be according to God's will. I don't know. Who knows how to say it? If you know how to say it, that's, that means that's how your life is. Though. Brothers and sisters, let me just, let me help you correct that mentality by giving you that which is legit. The truth is, as far as this life is concerned, God has little or nothing to do with whatever happens in your life again. Because everything about you was created and designed and captured in his books before you were made. He said, before you were formed, I knew you. And before I, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So your destiny has been finished as far as God is concerned. Now it will take partnership. It will take participation. It will take a deliberate interaction with that which was finished concerning you. For it to become a living reality. God has no hand. Many of the things we blame God for. I came here. I'm not defending God. I'm just here to tell you <laughs> that God had no hand in many things that happened to us. It was either as a case of ignorance or carelessness or sin or weakness. Most of all, ignorance. The Bible says they know not. Neither do they understand. And they walk in darkness. The darkness there is ignorance. That a man can be made a God. That a man can be made a prince. But as a prince who should ride on the horse, he's trekking on the foot. That's not God's... That's not God's intention. So from what God said in Genesis, we see that from that point, prayer was legitimized. And when Jesus came on the earth, Jesus came first of all, not just to die. Jesus came first of all to model for us the life of a man in its most perfect state as God created him. Because the first Adam failed. I hope you know. The first Adam did not do the job well by mirroring to us the full potentials that the man created by God should exhibit. The first Adam didn't work in dominion mandate at all. The only thing he ever did was give names and that was all when satan came into the garden he was supposed to shut out that spirit but he didn't and so when jesus came on this earth there is a reason why he had to be born and grow up as a man the bible says unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given jesus would just have appeared like adam a full grown man walk up to the cross and died if it was only salvation he came to achieve but God needed to show us the perfect example of a man and so Jesus had to be born and then grew like us the Bible says he was in all ways and in all thoughts tempted as we are yet without sin to show us that a man created in the image of God had the power to conquer and overcome sin Jesus walked in his ministry for three and a half years empowered fully by the holy ghost and we saw all that he could do to show us that man will live the best of his potentials and walk fully in destiny when he learns to partner with his god kind which is the holy spirit and in all that jesus modeled one of the things he showed us was that without prayer it is impossible for a man to fully exist as far as God's plan is concerned. He said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 
Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. I want to read a scripture there for us. Jesus was a man of prayer all through his life. If you read the gospel according to Luke, the, uh, of, of St. Luke, I believe that is the gospel that contained in details the prayer life of Jesus. Almost every chapter, one chapter after another, you will see the business of prayer. And it was in that chapter, in, in that book, I beg your pardon, in chapter 22, that the Bible tells us how he prayed in the garden. He was in agony and he prayed even just to go and die on the cross the bible says he had to pray that means that for you to fulfill god's divine mandate for your life it cannot be fulfilled outside of the business or the ministry of prayer prayer helps to generate the energy that is needed for the prosecution of your destiny part time the bible says he prayed till his sweat became as drop of blood how was it possible that in that cold i hope you know it was in the middle east and the geographical location of the middle east those of you who know that place very well is, is a desert region hot during the day and cold at night and jesus at this time was on a mountain and you if those of you that have climbed the mountain before or a hill before you know that it's cooler up there yet with all the cold the bible says he was sweating blood what kind of prayer was that what did he need to achieve as the son of god didn't he have the power to just do and undo what was needed to be achieved at that spot that he had to pray that long because if we know that you will now know why there are certain posture of prayers if you don't learn to learn to come into or learn to exhibit there are certain results you will not see oh brothers and sisters if you are here say amen so hebrews chapter 5 i will give you the interpretation of what happened at the garden hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 in chapter 5 the bible of the book of hebrews was talking to us about priesthood which was what jesus came to exemplify he came to create another priesthood that offered better sacrifices that brought about the redemption of mankind so the writer of hebrews needed to talk a lot about priesthood to show us the difference between the priesthood that jesus represented and the priesthood of aaron however there are some similarities between them that priesthood is supposed to exhibit and in verse 7 he was talking to us about jesus there was something that jesus did while he was a man on earth hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 who in the days of his flesh when he had offered all prayers and supplications he's talking about who jesus let me read it again who in the days of his flesh who in the days of his humanity who in the days of his weaknesses who in the days of his infirmity who in the days of his sickness some of you say i'm sick i can't pray have you been there before then satan has your remote button so okay the only if you want to just shut this person down and stop him from disturbing us get him to fall sick but the bible says in the days of his flesh what did he do when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries another translation says strong cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear he offered up strong cries it was he didn't just say he prayed he showed us the dimension of prayer that he entered into and i'm going to show you this evening two powerful dimensions of prayer if you want to birth a new season in your life if you want to obtain supernatural results if you want to obtain exponential or accelerated breakthroughs there are certain kinds of prayers you must pray there are certain kinds of prayers you must pray and the bible showed us that jesus prayed one of such kinds the bible says with vehement cries and tears this is what i call agonizing prayer desperate prayer the prayer that will not make the individual leave until they see what they are looking for somebody say amen. amen when was the last time you prayed like that when was the last time 
Some people say, Apostle, anytime I go to pray, that's when I just sleep off. This night we will conquer that spirit of prayerlessness. In the name of Jesus Christ. No, when your amen is not loud like this, I know I'm already doing something to you. I say we'll conquer that spirit of prayerlessness. Jesus taught us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. It is interesting that the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave from chapter 5 of Matthew to chapter 7, one of the things that he talked about, there were three things he spoke about that were necessary for a believer's walk in the kingdom. He spoke about fasting. He spoke about giving. He spoke about prayer. And in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 10, he taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Verse 10 says, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. From the day that statement was made, we were signed up into a life of warfare. Please listen carefully to me. Because kingdom speaks about territory and governance. Kingdom speaks about influence and dominion. And there cannot be territorial influence, territorial advancement, territorial occupation until there is contention. If two kings are at war, the purpose for that war is that one will conquer the other in order that certain benefits will be retrieved one of which is territorial influence that the king that conquered will gain dominion and influence over the territory of the other so when jesus made mention of this as the way we should pray thy kingdom come that as far as we are alive we must keep praying we must make sure we are constantly on the push and the press to see that the kingdom of god is advanced on earth that the kingdom of god is established on earth then it means that we are at war the bible says in colossians chapter 1 verse 13 who had brought us out of the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son you know why because if he had brought us out of the power of darkness and left us like that and didn't bring us under the dominion of a kingdom tendencies are that we will be drawn right back into captivity because it's a battle between two kingdoms and brothers and sisters i don't mean to get you scared but i mean to just tell you the truth tonight that i have discovered that one third of the life of a christian is warfare Tell your neighbor warfare. Okay, see the way you tell you told them. Hit your neighbor on the elbow and say warfare, warfare. You say, Apostle, how did you get that? Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. What did he say? I have fought a good fight. Is that what he says? I have what finished the race and I have kept the faith. In my opinion. That is, those are three dimensions by which destiny is fulfilled. I have fought a good fight. And I fought till I finished. And in my finishing, there was something I, I kept. You know, the Bible says, he will say, Well done, thou good and faithful. So one out of the three is what? To fight. The same Timothy, but first now, chapter 6. In verse 12, he said, fight the good fight of faith. It's good, but it is still fight. Brothers and sisters, destiny can be, never be prosecuted without battles, without contentions, without resistance. There must be some forceful engagement. Just sitting down and saying, according to the... I called a high government official one time in the military very high individual and i told him i said i saw this is what the lord showed me concerning your family and i want you to pray for three days with your family pray and avert accidents death declare preservation and the structure was to take communion with the prayers 
Is there anything wrong in that instruction? What was the reply I got? He said, well, you know, man, you know the way big people talk. He said, well, you know, man of God, all my life has been by faith. I live by faith. And this is his definition of faith. I just allow God. I don't want to fight. I don't have strength to do anything. Let God just fight for me. If death wants to come, let it just come. It means it's my time. Somebody say, God forbid. Didn't the Bible say faith is a substance of things hoped for? That means if it is faith, there is an action that corresponds that it is faith. Pray and advert it. When I heard that one, I said, oh, I made a mistake. No wonder it took me 40, almost 14 days to deliver the message. I said, well, I've delivered my message. I washed my hand. Tomorrow, if anything happens, don't come back and tell me to raise any dead. I don't have strength for that. Jesus said, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come also means your plan, your purpose, your will concerning my life come to pass in succession and in the right timing. Listen carefully. It is one thing for the plans of God. Remember it says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope, an expected end so it is one thing first of all that the plans of god for your life must come to pass in their succession one after the other that you don't escape anyone or no one escapes you but then number two it is also important that they come to pass in their right timing because god told abraham that your descendants shall be in another land and they shall be held in captivity for 400 years but they left egypt after 430 years was that one the plan of god was that one the will of god thy kingdom come means that your will concerning my life in its succession will come to pass according to the time so when satan sees that out of 10 on that list number five is supposed to be where you will break into exponential wealth satan say allow him to get number one to four but this number five shift it he will never get it so every time you're about to enter that season, it's like a cycle of attacks are coming. Everything is falling apart. Brothers and sisters, when you notice that, just change the warfare. You have gotten to the point where it is either you engage heaven and insist that that which God has desired concerning you come to pass, or you may forever live and never tap into that place. It is possible. Then the Bible says in Hebrews 11, it said, These all died in faith, yet not receiving. Talk to me now. They died in faith, but they did not receive. But yet they died in what? And yet they didn't receive. I thought by just having faith, you can receive everything. Brother. <laughs> Faith has a life cycle. Those of you that have been with this ministry for a while, I've taught you the life cycle of faith. That faith comes, faith grows, and faith speaks. That is the reason why when the disciples could not cast out the demon from that young boy, they went to Jesus and said, why couldn't we cast the demon? Jesus said, it was because of your unbelief. Are you, are you serious, Jesus? It was because of our unbelief. It, no be you just send us. No, no, no. We went out and casted demons. Isn't it? He sent them out now to preach the gospel. And to heal the sick and to cast out demons. And they did it successfully and came back. And you come and say these ones don't have faith. All that Jesus was telling them was. The faith needed for this assignment. The faith you had was not enough. Was not the right size of faith. That was needed to prosecute this assignment if my shoe size is 44 and you buy me a shoe with the size 42 did you buy me a shoe yes you bought me a shoe did you give me a gift yes you gave me a gift but can it be of any use to me no you get it now 
So different phases in life and destiny needs different sizes of faith. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's the first stage of the cycle. But for faith to grow, the Bible says, building up your most holy faith. By what? By talking. By gisting. By what? Shout it louder. Shout it better. Uh -huh. So you know that this is the will of God for me. For instance, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. It says, I will bless you amongst, uh, above all people. And there shall be none barren amongst you. Neither you nor your livestock. And this is a woman looking for children. It is now written, she has seen it in the word. That God said, neither you nor your cattle shall be barren. I have fowl that are bearing children. How come fowls don't have fibroid? How come goats don't have fibroid? Under all kinds of difficult conditions, dogs and goats, they give birth. Why is it the human being that is well taken care of that has fibroid? So yes, the word of God says this provision is available for me. But for it to be accessible, your faith will need to switch to the next dimension. And that's where prayer comes in. When you begin to pray, what prayer does is prayer begins to expand that word and make it an image, a living reality. That word, when it came to you, it came to you in a seed form. And you, God does not want to bless you with seed. He gave that seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You can't give seed to the eater. For it to make sense to the eater, it must be planted, harvested, processed, and then it becomes bread. So just because you saw it in the word of God or just because it came to you by prophecy or the Holy Spirit spoke to you, that word is still in a seed form. It is not enough to produce result. It's prayer that will now begin to bring out the potentials of that seed and turn it to become the harvest of that which you, which you are looking for. You pray to a point where it becomes a living reality inside of you. That yes, he, though he, Jesus was rich, but for your sake he became poor. That through his poverty you might become rich. That God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that you have him in abundance. And that word as you pray, that word abundance begins to enlarge in your heart. Until a time comes where it is difficult for you to think that there is lack. It is at that point that you enter into the fullness of that which God has promised you. That is the reason why many people pray and don't see results. Are you hearing me this evening? They just think, oh, God said it. I believed it. That settles it. Yes, in heaven. But not on earth. Because if it was supposed to... You, see, scripture is not mathematics. Don't use logic. If A plus B is equals to C, then this minor, no, 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 no. That's not the, that, no, no. Faith has its own logic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the reason why that prophecy that came to you five years ago, as though it will happen the next year, up till now, it has not come to pass. It's not the prophet that lied. There's something wrong with your faith. You have not understood how to engage it, how to metamorphose it from a prophecy to a reality. First Timothy 1 verse 18 says, This charge I command you, Timothy, of all the prophecies that have gone concerning you, that with them you might war a good warfare. Why do I need to pray if God has already spoken? Because God spoke from his realm. In the realm that God lives, there are no impossibilities. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is no sickness in heaven. There is no lack in heaven. There is so much wealth in heaven that the streets of heaven is paved with gold. Gold. That's why God laughs at stingy people. And just in case you don't know, I came to tell you. It's true. That God laughs at what? Because he's always holding to himself. He said, I don't know when I will get another one again. So man, hold this 100,000. So he starts spending it. Just the way they cut meat. And God is saying, look at this young man. When there is abundance where you came from. There's so much abundance, they didn't know what to use the gold to do. 
they now use it to make road in heaven. That means if some people their mentality not change, this is a joke actually now. But if some people's mentality don't change, when they go to heaven, they may you, beware. They need to bring security because some of them will use axe. <laughs> See all the poverty that hit me in earth. It's time for. <laughs> but you serve a God that is more than that has more than enough he's more than enough that's his name El Shaddai it means more than enough waiting you want I can he's able to stretch beyond the limit of your imaginations El Shaddai it means multi-breasted one so it's like one puppy trying to suck milk and from all the breasts that the mother has milk is coming out which one will he suck from that's that's the exact interpretation of that word el shaddai that's what it means so just those of you that came with your last card when you have this reality as you are going back pay transport for somebody out of that last card because you don't know how it will happen but you know that my god shall supply all my needs according to his re listen he says for i will restore to you what does it mean to restore it means to clear out the old from the store and bring in a new store sometimes god allows you to go so broke not because he wants to bless you again but because he wants to introduce to you another dimension of blessing So you are here holding on to that 1,000, that 1K, urgent 2K. <laughs> Meanwhile, in your tomorrow, God has prepared someone to come with a contract of 250,000. You now see why you should pray. It is prayer that will make you break into the summit of that faith. It will show you the thing as it is. And then when you have seen it or you have touched it in the spirit realm, it becomes almost impossible. That is why Jesus said that with God all things are possible. Yet, fast forward later, he said, To him that believeth, all things are possible. Let me give you an example of men. Men in scripture that knew how to tap into the place, the power, and the mystery of prayers. That knew how to prevail. Okay, first of all, let's look at Isaiah 66. Let me finish the text before we continue. Isaiah 66. So brothers and sisters we must pray we must pray we must learn to prevail prevail in prayers we must learn to secure victories secure divine verdict over issues over over situations over matters why suffer yourself and go to a, a, a human law court when you can stand before a supreme court of heaven and decide the case and every human court that is against you will be forced by the power and the authority of that supreme court of heaven to rule in your favor can i tell you how to win a case can i teach you something are you ready to learn it i didn't hear you are you ready to learn if you want to win a law case you know a case in the law court somebody sued you to court and you know now i'm afraid of teaching this now because it will work whether you are guilty or innocent yes oh that's why it's good to serve god though. god knows how to override even when you are guilty if you understand the patterns and the systems of god you can override it in the natural somebody say override that's true if you have a court case let me show you what to do take the case is it case file huh take it whatever that document is that contains the case whether it is against you or you are against somebody especially if the court is beginning to do like this take it to your bedroom 
wake up in the night by 12 midnight put it there on the ground and stand before it and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb I appear in the courts of heaven and I invoke the mercy of God to overturn this judgment in my favor pray like that for three days you will be shocked what will happen I'm saying this is going on on the airwaves and I'm saying this because there are people that have thought this and it has worked for them they are trying to manipulate human courts no problem let them continue go to the supreme court of heaven where spirits meet and decide cases is that not how they decide the case of Ahab for, him to, for them to kill him they say God said who will go and kill Ahab for us the spirit came and said I will be a lying spirit to all his prophets God said you will succeed go and the, the foolish king didn't know that 400 prophets you know humanly we think that in the majority is the voice of God but when the courts of heaven are sat over a matter the majority can become your downfall try it it will work I assure you I assure you I wish I had time to teach you more today what to do with your CV when you are looking for a job there's no time <laughs> there's no time today I, I wonder I wonder listen listen because of the things that I've seen in God I wonder why people give up so easily I wonder ask our workers and our leaders they will tell you those of them that are very close to me they know that you don't mention impossibility before me when there's a task to do i sit on your head until it is done because before i gave you that task i saw it done already and there's no way what i saw will now will now be countered by your oh. isaiah 66 verse 8 and 9 who has heard such a thing who has seen such things shall the earth be made to give birth in one day he's asking a question is it possible for the earth to bring forth in one day if you know that you have to plant corn and wait for three or four months for it to harvest depending on how blessed or how close the land is it's true <laughs> depending on how blessed or how close the land is now he's asking a question is it possible that in one day you can plant and receive the harvest or shall a nation be born at once in other words shall the deliverance of a nation come in one day after 60 and plus years of captivity look at nigeria for example you know they call us the giant of africa it is true but it is not true it is true because giants of africa there means that you have individual personalities from this country that have achieved or, or that have attained global achievement so they stand out as giants but the nation itself is languishing in impoverishment not be so why are you quiet now not so now and the problem is from the church actually because the church is what you see in society is a reflection of what is happening in the church in the body of christ that's how it is we have champion ministries champion ministers the mighty men spiritual in africa are from nigeria but look at our church when was the last time you went for a, a normal church service and they could sustain prayer for more than 15 or 20 minutes the average christian in nigeria is just looking for the next papa or prophet and the thing because of their chicken change that they sow a seed they are covered and protected I know some of you didn't like what I just said but I just said it anyway I'm tired of the laziness of Christianity in our days just it's just is burdensome it's becoming toxic if you are in my shoes you know what I'm talking about on almost every day one complaint after another and some of these things can can easily be solved when people learn to bury themselves in prayer if people can trust god enough
to travel and break into the promises that will bring them out of that pain that they are in. It says, shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. King James said, for as soon as Zion traveled, is that not so? Talk to me, is that not so? As soon as Zion traveled, in other words, it is possible for a deliverance to come in one day. It is possible for a long-awaited delayed harvest to come in one minute. It is possible. The only way out is as soon as Zion traveled. That means there is a dimension of prayer that Zion has to engage if they must see this kind of extraordinary result. You have not broken into exponential wealth yet. You have not broken into that dimension of God that says He daily loaded you with benefit. You know why? Because you have not sustained prayer victories enough. Every point you are in life is only a summit or a result of how much victories you have attained in God through prayers. Write that hashtag. Believe me. So when next you say this is impossible for me, this is a yoke for me, this is a burden for me, someone else that has traveled enough to turn that that mountain to become a stepping stone will look at you and say what you are calling a burden is actually a stepping stone to another dimension that means that limitations are personalized they are not generalized and if you are hearing that it means that the limitations of your father must not be your limitation the limitations of your mother's house must not be your limitation you can come out of obscurity and push your way into limelight all of you have divine destinies in God. It is the one that decides to arise and champion the cause with God that will enter into it. One of the vows I made in my life is that I will be the one to make my son name popular. Because I realized God did not give any man small destiny. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should. That's how he puts it should greatly increase is that it job chapter 8 verse 7 there's a play of words there i want to use i want to use one word job 8 7 quickly please job 8 7 though your beginning was small yet your latter end would i think that's the presence continuous of will isn't it that means that the increase of your end is an act of your will that's what it means. Put it in King James for us. Ah, there's fire already in my spirit. We are going to pray this night. I will lead you to make some dangerous prayers. Eh? Some stubborn mountains must be rolled away this night. You don't need miracle service to see certain miracles on a consistent scale in your life. It says, no, where are you now? 8 verse 7 Though thy beginning was small Yet thy latter end should Should Not may Should This is how it should be You can start small But you don't end up small Come out of that mentality And you say eh, God is working on me I'm still going through process Abba, After 10 years What kind of process is that? The, the Bible not say whose leaf shall not wither. Even though you are not bearing fruit, at least there must be a sign. Say God is working on me. Say I'm going through my wilderness period for 20 years. For 15 years. You are still going through your wilderness period. Okay, what's the word that God has given you to reassure you in this wilderness period now? No word. So you are not even growing in knowledge. You are not growing in understanding. You are not growing in light. How will you now see that desired latter end increase? But this night, if we are ready to pray, we are going to command victories. I didn't hear your amen. Your amen tells me you don't want to pray. Very quickly, two examples and then we'll pray. Elijah, James chapter 5 verse 17 to 18. I want to show you a few men in scripture 
that learn to prevail to prevail to come against opposition to come against roadblocks to come against limitations and enter into victory to conquer oppositions that the enemy set against them one man was elijah the bible says elijah was a man of like passions as we are verse 17 to 18 of james 5 he said and he prayed earnestly earnestly passionately when was the last time you prayed earnestly i beg you ask your neighbor when was the last time you prayed earnestly you know today when you when we when we come to pray in church we pray all kinds of slay queen and slay king prayers you see people praying as though they are <laughs> you know maybe they are praying but in their heart they are saying well god you know me i don't need any of these things i already have enough i just came here to mark time most times the prayerless people are the most impoverished people based on my 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 my, my judgment sometimes now poor people now you know sabi pray please forgive me but that's the truth yes sometimes those who are the ones in lack or in the absence of the will of God being fulfilled in their lives, sometimes those are the prayerless people. You come to church and you ask people to pray, and you see them gisting around, and they have no earnestness, no passion, no heartfelt energy. They are not praying as though this thing must happen now. They are not praying with the eyes of faith. They are praying and say, Well, God, whenever you want to do it well brother you have to start praying like that now don't wait till you get married because the day they call you that your, your wife is in labor room and she's under a 50 50 chance is either she dies and the baby survives or they both die that's when you will now remember that i taught you about prayers if you call me by that time eh? if you call me by that time i've always shared the story here that i'm a product of prayer I'm a product of the testimony that prayer men can prevail with God in prayer. Five years of age, I was struck with deafness and dumbness and insanity by witchcraft. Somebody say witchcraft. Hmm, witchcraft is real, let me tell you. I know where you come from. Oh, your, your, your grandfather was the one that started EYN church in your locality. I, I understand. He was the one that planted, he gave land for them to plant so all his children were baptized by the, the the priest and then you are the second generation or the third generation i understand but with that brothers and sisters witchcraft is real so real that many of the people have seen with the eyes of the spirit that are under the oppression of witchcraft don't know that they are under the oppression of witchcraft many of them you wait and let's start ministering you see them manifest as though they plan to come and manifest No, you think about it somebody dressed up nice in the hostel rub palm cake on their head put foundation uh, uh, whatever they came to slay only to find themselves being slain now <laughs> that just tells you listen <laughs> that just tells you that the individual didn't even know and satan is so wicked that he doesn't mind transgenerational bondage that's why he says but i will contend with him that contends with you and i will save your children this night somebody will pray and break open a door of victory and breakthroughs for even your children and your children's children in the name of jesus christ bible says elijah prayed earnestly that there should be no rain and he prayed again and rain came when you read first kings chapter 18 verse 1 to 2 god told elijah i say show yourself to ahab and i will send rain that was the instruction but he showed himself to ahab and nothing happened from verse 31 you read to down to verse 38 he offered the sacrifice he even sold water listen carefully now listen carefully because i want to show you that even sometimes seed is not enough to open certain doors listen carefully elijah even sowed a seed for rain to come how when he was offering his own sacrifice he told them to pour water on the sacrifice i hope you know that by this time it was three and a half years that there was no rain or dew in the land so water was a scarce commodity in fact 
the king and Obadiah were in search of water and grasses. They had gone round the entire nation looking for water because all the water sources had dried up. So in that water was a scarce commodity. Elijah still sold water because he was looking for rain. He poured water the first time on the sacrifice. The second time, the third time. The Bible says the water soaked everything and even filled up the trench. The word trench there, the Bible says it could hold up four seers or three seers of seed. Seed, 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 seed. That means Elijah, that action was a, an exchange, a spiritual transaction for the rain that God had promised to come. Somebody didn't catch what I said. No, I tell you, many people didn't catch what I just said. Even with that, rain didn't come. Elijah had to go and pray. Don't deceive yourself and think if I sow a seed, that's enough. No. Sometimes the power of your seed is on the strength of your priesthood. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent what? Sacrifice. Sometimes it's not seed alone. Sometimes you need to combine it. He told Cornelius, your prayer and alms giving has gone up to God. Those are powerful forces you must have in your life. If anything is silent in your life, it should not be your prayer life and your giving life. It's a double-edged sword. Because those are the two things, those are the two actions as a Christian that brings you out of self. And that's the point where you become powerful and deadly to the enemy. Elijah had to pray and rain came. Another man is Isaac. Genesis 25 verse 21 to 22. The Bible says Isaac was married for 20 years and he saw barrenness repeating its pattern in the life of his wife. When I studied my Bible, I realized why Rebecca was barren. Because when they were took, taking Rebecca in Genesis 24, when they were taking her from her father's house, her father and her family blessed her and said, you will have nations who come from you. You will have multiple children and all of that. But when she went and met Isaac, listen carefully, the Bible says in the last verse of Genesis 24 that Isaac took her into his mother's tent. He took her into Sarah's tent. Sarah had just died. But the yoke of barrenness was still on Sarah. Why do you take your wife a new beginning and connect her to the old? You catch it now, ma? No wonder Rebecca 20 years later became barren. Because she was taken to Sarah's tent. That was where the marriage was consummated. So the spirit of barrenness that was still there. We need spiritual intelligence, let me tell you, as far as life is concerned. Isaac saw barrenness coming again. And the Bible says in verse 21 there, that Isaac entreated the Lord. When you look at it in either message translation or amplified, it says, and Isaac prayed hard. Prayed very much. Men... There are times when certain situations in your family, the only person that can bring an end to it is the violentness and the resilience of your prayer. That you stand in your authority as the priest over that family and say enough is enough in the, uh, of, of this challenge. I can't watch and see sickness kill my children. I can't watch and see disease and barrenness destroy my wife. I can't watch and see the devil ridicule my family with shame. I must arise and do something about it. Isaac prayed hard. And God heard him. And barrenness was, was, was reversed. Jacob too, the Bible says he prayed. Genesis 32, 24 to 29. Jacob had left his in-law. Running away with his wife. He had many belongings. He now had material acquisition, but he was not blessed. And the Bible says the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. He knew that he needed a change in destiny. There are prayers I call destiny actualization prayers. 
that what God told you concerning you will not come to pass until you process it through the fire of prayer. That night, Jacob met a man. The Bible says he wrestled with an angel. Just before you think that Jacob was fighting with the man physically, go and read Hosea chapter 12, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says he wept with supplications before the angel. In other words, the angel, he didn't really fight the angel. He could not. The Bible says he maketh his angel's spirit and his ministers flames of fire. Angels are so powerful. Even when they are carrying human body, when they come in human form, they are not human. They are so powerful. That's why when the angel touched him at his thigh, all of a sudden it went out of joint. Can you fight that kind of a person? It took the lens of a prophet. Many years later, when Uzziah saw it in the spirit, and he saw that why the angel could not go, was because Jacob kept praying. And remember, Abraham offered a sacrifice in Genesis 28. And when Jacob came to that same place that Abraham had raised an altar, he saw the heavens open and angels ascending and descending. The Bible didn't say descending and ascending. It said ascending and descending. So your prayer can, can command an atmosphere that traps literally angels. Oh God, you people didn't come this evening. You didn't come for service. Are you hearing what I'm saying at all? Command angelic interventions. Every time the angel wants to go, his prayer will draw the angel back. And the angel say, let me go. Can we have men that will pray like that? Can we have women that will arise like that? Can we break off laziness? Break off complacency? Break off hopelessness? Who told you that there is no hope? The people of the world say, when there is life, there is hope. I say no when there is hope there is life because the bible says we have a hope of eternal life even when jesus was going to raise lazarus from the dead now i saw two dimensions of prayer that jesus prayed that he didn't pray any other place the Bible says in John chapter 11 when he went to raise Lazarus from the dead. When you read in verse 33, the Bible says he groaned in his spirit and he was troubled. That was prayer. He groaned in his spirit. In Amplify, he said Jesus was moved in his spirit. That means there is a dimension of prayer called groanings that moves the activity of the Holy Ghost inside of a man. He said, likewise, the Spirit helpeth in our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit make itself, maketh intercession for us. How? With groanings. Somebody say groanings. You know that kind of prayer? Kabrunda, nimuskama, aminapat kapa, dikanda, vaaikakam, tabo, bratukam, dama akrapa, amrukamipa, amrutunayakunga, amakamakia, iuna pantobaka, wada pundi, ubakuapa, damutuka, wapa, apanutuma. That's how to pray those kind of prayers. That's how I pray. That's how I pray. That's how you pray and come for a service and you see all kinds of miracles. That's how you pray. Not these cosmetic prayers that we have developed. You are praying as though the womb of destiny must open up. Barutumba kamda bokoa iapundo dilosomba damuskunda ba urpo amundo moko. There are times when there are no more tongues again. As soon as Zion travel. She brought forth. You have not prayed like that. That's why you are not seeing strange things. Listen, God, God is not a respecter of persons. What God says to one, He can say to all. What God did yesterday, He can do today. If those of today can pay the price of the fathers. That's how you pray. Some of you, if you come and pray near me in my prayer, you will run away. All this English is here when I'm here. This year we'll do the English. I went to preach somewhere recently. I think it was in school. And the time for the administration was just 40 minutes. What do I want to say in 40 minutes? 
And you know in that 40 minutes they want you to Well I understood maybe they had so many programs and all of that But you know in 40 minutes they want you to still bring down the heaven and do everything you do So I decided there was no need to do Bible studies for this kind of ministration Because let me tell you Preaching is not about words Paul said that my speech and my preaching was not in the words of man's wisdom But in the demonstration of spirit Jesus said the words I speak they are spirit so the best way to minister for 40 minutes and open the heavens over a people is to go and groan for four days so from day one day two day three shut my door many of us need to break distractions you need to you need to there are certain legitimate distractions that you need to come against if destiny must be ahead of you like that for four days and we went for the meeting when i entered there and i just sang a song the power of god broke out in that place you were there deaf people heard in that service no preaching 15 about 15 or 20 people gave their life to christ the power of god broke out deliverances no preaching so man of God you think it's just about having all the exegesis Having all the re revelation and the rema Some of you that's what you have in your jota now You have you, you, you have just You are even padding all the messages Preparing them Say did they have the opportunity If I just When you go to the village to preach Demons know they hear English They know they hear grammar by the time they put crippled people in front of you you know that if, if, if something has to happen without grammar something has to happen outside of grammar for those cripples to walk because to them the gospel that you will preach is that their sick is healed the bible calls us ministers of the spirit that's what jesus did the bible says he groaned in his spirit in verse 35 the bible says jesus wept they thought he was weeping for sorrow no it was a form of prayer didn't we just read in hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 that he offered up prayers and supplications how through vehement cries there are some cries that are not cries of sorrows they are travels to bring forth something to change your season to bring about a new order in your life Isaiah 53 verse 11 and 12 He says he shall see the travail of his soul He shall see the labor of his soul And he shall be satisfied The prayers that must come from within you You know when you pray like that People look at you and say Ah this one is <laughs> Well you have the talk I have the results Amen we finished that meeting 40 minutes was over i dropped the mic and walked out the place was upside down with the power of god that's how i came my prayers that's why you see when jesus got to the grave of lazarus in verse 41 the bible says verse 38 the bible says he's still grown verse 41 when he got to the grave of lazarus he had prayed and achieved victory he had already seen that lazarus will come out is this how you pray when you want to raise a dead father i thank you because you have heard me is that how you pray so when you see that they are able to pray father we thank you you not think that when you pray like that because daddy geo prayed like that now lie you now lie you now lie forget what you see on tv something has gone on in the secret they have prayed so much there is no voice again so even if they cough miracles will happen because when you conclude it in the spirit the disciples came to jesus they said lord even the demons were subject to us in your name <laughs> jesus laughed he said when you left i saw satan fall like lightning and how do you see except by prayer I will stand upon my watch and set me upon my tower and watch to see what he will say to me. It is in prayer that your senses are activated for you to see what God has done. So when Jesus sent them to cast smaller demons, he engaged the biggest spirit, which was Satan. And when Satan was defeated, those guys went and they were winning anyhow. 
in life don't launch out even when god has spoken to you don't launch out until you have secured victory that's why even after the baptism this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased he went where to the wilderness to pray and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame spread what kind of publicity is that no poster no handbill somebody just showed up and an entire nation is hearing about him can i tell you something those of you that are called into music ministry including ministers fame is spiritual fame is spiritual people don't just like if you like put it on instagram twitter everywhere TikTok, everywhere people don't just follow you there has to be a voice from above on your life there's a there's there's, a, there's an invisible hand compelling the eyes of men somebody called me from lagos one time through our pr she said she used to go to sleep and listen to music on audio mark but when she went to sleep in the night she woke up with our message playing and she woke up from a dream in the scenario of the message so when she woke up she looked and how did she get the message she didn't download it if it was not the finger of god it doesn't just happen are you ready to pray there's so much i would have shown you this night but stand up let's pray the bible says elijah was a man of like passions as we are before we pray let me tell you quickly put this at the back of your mind it will help you in life four qualities for an effective and a prevailing prayer life number one righteousness the bible says elijah the prayers of a righteous man availeth much righteousness and purity is becoming scarce in the church that's why people pray and god seems not to hear he say my hand is not too short to deliver you my ears are not deaf to hear you but your iniquity have separated you you want to have power with god you must uphold righteousness and purity when you live a life that is pure before god then you will resist the devil and he will flee humility is another aspect too for god resisted the proud and gives grace to the humble faith don't start praying if you don't believe that there's a god that hears prayer but finally perseverance perseverance simply means you decide not to stop until you get your desired result or until god speaks it doesn't matter whether you pray that prayer for three weeks for six months for ten years it's becoming difficult these days to see people who can hold prayers for one year complete we started our prayers on the site this year some people their gas finished after a few months you know one thing with prayer when you start god knows that you are doing serious business so he doesn't break into your space immediately to try to interact with you he leaves you there to see how long you are willing to go because the length that you are willing to go is the best expression of your faith and your trust in god job said though he slay me yet will i trust him so even after six months if god doesn't answer i still believe like job said for i know that my redeemer liveth and he shall stand at last on the earth perseverance can i tell you something tonight as we pray if all of us here can persevere in the place of prayer we will record notable and consistent victories whether it is the prayer of groaning or the prayer of crying and weeping until the heavens are moved God spoke to a man through his prophet. He said, prepare your house for you will die from this sickness. The man said, thank you. He turned to the wall and the Bible says he wept. And God said, I've added 15 more years. 
So it is possible that the hand of God can be swerved easily. If the hand of God can be swerved, then which principality and power cannot be dethroned for your sake? Are we ready to pray? Hold the hands of your neighbor. Just two, two. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, I just want you in the next two minutes to lift your voice and begin to pray in other tongues. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, this is the right time to pray. If you are listening online, find a neighbor and begin to pray. This is that night where something must shift. Something must change and break open. This is a night where the door to a new dimension, the door to a new season is about to open. He said, for like a prince, thou hast had power with God and with men and has prevailed. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to 24. Please spare me 10 minutes and we will be done tonight. Mark 11, 23, 24. Quickly, quickly, quickly. For as shortly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, is a command, and be cast into the sea. The mountain represents any impediment standing between you and your next level. Standing between you and your breakthrough. Standing between you and the actualization of the promises of God for your life. Anything stopping or impeding your advancement is a mountain. Be removed and cast into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart. But believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Verse 24. It says, for therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. In other words, this is how you address the mountain. You address the mountain 
and you command it in prayer are you hearing what i'm saying i want you to raise your voice this evening anything that looks like a blockage anything that looks like an impediment anything standing before you at your next level before you for the reason any obstacle of liberation Hallelujah. Don't just pray. I want us to pray with understanding. Ezekiel 21. The Lord is asking me that we should break stubborn demonic cycles in our lives. A cycle is an activity that happens within the frame up of a particular time or season. Any stubborn cycle will be broken this evening. Ezekiel 21, verse 27 in King James. Verse 27 in King James. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. And it shall be what? No more. I want you to lift your voice. Every stubborn cycle in my life that has, that has impeded my advancement, that has registered the signature of darkness in my life or in my family the bible says i will overturn 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 command those cycles to be broken command those cycles to be overturn in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray Hey, 
This last prayer is personal. If your family members are here, go and look for them and hold their hands. Listen, listen. Give us Isaiah 49 verse 24 and 25. Last prayer. I feel that there is an anointing tonight to cancel bloodline patterns. Bloodline orchestrations. Bloodline satanic attacks. Are we ready to pray here? Please don't be distracted. Protocol. Handle what's outside, please. Isaiah 49 verse 24. Shall the prayer be taken from the mighty? Or the captives of the righteous be delivered? He said, but thus says the Lord. This is the verdict from God. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. The captivity in this scripture speaks about, listen. The captivity in this scripture is not because the enemy is more powerful. But it's because he has found a way legitimately to bring people under a yoke. He has looked at an affliction or an iniquity in your bloodline. And on the strength of that iniquity, he has a reason to invoke transgenerational limitations. What you call generational curses and mindset and patterns and all of those things. The Bible says, I will contend with him that contends with you. You are going to pray. If you are holding the hand of your family members, I want you to pray and screen down your bloodline anything that looks like a satanic signature that is trying to find expression i want you to ask god to arise contend with the contender Oh, oh, oh. Emana, Kopekomaha, 
Hadia, a Kakopa Kahaya, a Ropokop Hadia, a Kapata, a Pepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepep
And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehends it not. Therefore I declare and decree. That the light of God begins to shine brightly over your life. Just be soft. The power of God is going to touch at least seven persons now. And God is saying I should declare over your spiritual life. A new door has been opened. He said I looked. I was, I was in heaven and I looked in the spirit and I saw a door open. And I heard a voice that said come up hither. Anyone that has been in one place for long spiritually. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Begin to access new dimensions. Dimensions of power. Yes help them. Dimensions of wisdom. Dimensions of multiple grace. Dimensions of spiritual encounters. Of spiritual encounters. Dimensions of prayers. Prayers that will command on common results. Step into that grace right now. I said step into that grace right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I declare a new day and a new season has come. I declare tonight your name has been changed from Jacob to Israel. And I declare that every power that has held you forcefully in one spot for long and I refuse to allow you go free has refused to allow you make advancement I arrest them right now I arrest them right now yeah that's it I feel the power of God just coming now I arrest them right now I arrest them right now And I declare over your life, be free. 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 In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. Lord, I declare that in the days ahead there will be miracles. There will be strange occurrences in the lives of your children. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, while you stand, just wave your hands and give the Lord praise. What a night. Just wave your hands and bless Him. Thank you, Father. Your name be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody standing everywhere, no movement. I want to give an opportunity for those who need to accept the Lord Jesus. Or want to rededicate their lives afresh unashamedly i've taught you about the mystery of prevailing prayers and how that by prayers you can have power with god and be victorious on earth but if you are yet to say yes to jesus then that cannot become your reality wherever you are no time to waste if you are here and you want to surrender to the lord jesus you want to make him your lord and savior or you want to rededicate your life afresh to him you are tired of going through cycles you are tired of going back again and again up today backsliding tomorrow you want to rededicate your life and serve him you want fresh fire upon you in this new phase of your life wherever you are i want you to come to the front quickly and i'll pray with you all standing everywhere let's just honor god for these ones if there are any of such here and if you are online and you want to make that decision when we are making the prayers i want you to repeat after us and believe in your heart that by the confession of your mouth you are saved if you are here and you want to surrender to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to him please rush to the front quickly quickly and let's just get you back to him it is the prayer of a righteous man that avails much god has no pleasure in the prayer of a sinner it is the prayer of a righteous man god bless you please keep coming someone who must join her please if you're hearing my voice right now say yes to him while you can
Father, we thank you. Please stretch your hands towards her. And if God is talking to you and you need to be in the front right now, please do it very quickly before we finish the prayers. You are not standing before men. You are standing before the God of heaven and earth. My dear, please just put your right hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe that you died and rose again, that I will be saved. I confess you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Now keep your right hand on your chest. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, by the authority of your word that her sins, according to scripture, are forgiven. I declare from today that her names, her names are erased from the book of death and written in the Lamb's book of life. I declare and declare that from today, your spirit will come upon her, rest upon her to make her a victor, a victor and a champion. Make her to walk in the God life, to serve you all the days of her life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you.